Kevin, halfway through the term of this administration, we have a, a change of leadership. Does that also involve a change in direction as far as the manifesto is concerned that got you people into power two years ago? It's a good question, Richard. No, it's not a change of direction. I'd describe it more as a change of gear. Lib Dems naturally have a, a leadership election every two years. Uh, Dina Romero has been an exceptionally brilliant leader for the last six years of the group. And the group have now decided that we're just going to have a change of gear rather than a change of direction. Now, I listened to that YouTube uh, uh, broadcast of the annual meeting. And you said a lot of things, including, you know, as far as the drive goes, changing up a gear, which you've uh, reiterated. The one thing you didn't talk about was the economic recovery of the city. There are an awful lot of worried business people out there in Bath wondering what is going to happen. How can your administration help them? Well, post-COVID, Richard, economic recovery is our major priority. Hence why I've created two deputy leader roles. One of them, Richard Samuels, that's got finance and economic development within it. And the second one is climate emergency and sustainable transport with Sarah Warren. Now, both these are fundamental. So what I've done is the whole cabinet will now feed through those two individuals and everything will be, will be connected to economic regeneration and the green sustainable transport. So business people of Bath need to be reassured that economic regeneration is core to our manifesto commitments and there will be a report coming to me in two weeks time specifically around economic regeneration. Uh, whether we like it or not, tourism forms uh, a big amount of money when it comes to annual income in Bath. We're a world heritage city, hopefully we'll be getting all our uh, national and international tourists coming back into town. Um, I didn't see an appointment of a cabinet member for tourism and heritage. Well, tourism, heritage and the arts are really important to the people of Bath and really important to the surrounding areas. I had an amazing meeting with Sue, the Vice-Chancellor of Bath Spa University, and I learned so much about how local residents value arts and culture. Hence why I've created uh, a culture, uh, I put that within children's services. So Dina Romero will now be in charge of that. She's also in charge of events. And it just shows the importance of culture, arts and tourism to this administration and our commitments on that with our manifesto. It's really, really important that we make our tourists feel welcome. Uh, and that also ticks the box of economic regeneration as well. It's early days. You're finding your feet. You are, there are, as you say, a lot of things to, to work out uh, before you can really get going on, on doing what you have to do. But you're halfway through your term of office. Will everything be done now with one eye on those local elections in two years' time? Good question, Richard. Well, Lib Dems are a listening group. OK, so we're always constantly listening to the electorate. We don't wait until elections come along um, to, to make sure we're doing the right things for the right people. We do it all the time. We don't, we're not just a reactionary party. So the whole four years we'll be working hard for our electorate. And then hopefully in two years' time they'll judge us on our results and not just what we've done the last few weeks for an election. There are mixed feelings about what's being done so far in terms of uh, green issues. Uh, not everybody, by any means, uh, is enjoying CAS, which has come into effect. Uh, there will be, I'm sure, many other measures like permit parking uh, coming into force that not everybody is going to agree with. But these are things that you as a local authority have been told to do, haven't you? So it's a bit ironic in a way that it's a conservative government that's telling you to cut emissions, to clean up the air. How do you feel about that? And what reassurances can you give to people that, that you really will listen to their concerns? Clean air zone, you're, you're spot on, Richard. It's been imposed upon us by central government. We didn't have a choice about what we, what we could do and how, and how we can implement it and how we can spend the money, which is very, very frustrating for local authorities. I believe local people should make local decisions. So having something imposed upon us by central government is not appropriate. However, we, we will monitor the clean air zone. We'll monitor how it's working for people. And if anybody has any issues with the clean air zone, they must contact the clean air zone team. They, we've got some really good feedback from them. They're very quick on responding. So please, please, please contact that team. 
But you're right. It should, in my personal opinion, and I will also believe the opinion of the group, is that local residents should make decisions that affect them, and it shouldn't. Central government should not impose decisions that are upon people. I give you the opportunity, because a lot of people follow my blog, of, of addressing the people of Baines. If there was one thing, Kevin, you wanted to say as you set out as the new leader of the, uh, the ruling party, um, what would you say? So, that's an excellent question. I like to talk to people on a one-to-one -one basis, but I think if I was going to give a, a general message that I'm here to learn and to listen and I will react to what you want as the residents of Baines. It is not my place to impose things upon you. It's my place to react and do things that you want me to do. And what would you say to people who say you're, you're a new boy, that there are more experienced people around who could have done this job? Well, I'm an experienced councillor. I've been a councillor for over 10 years now. Uh, I'm relatively new to the Baines area, only been here for about six years. However, the Lib Dem group have put their trust in me, and I'm very honoured and humbled about that. Uh, and hopefully the people of Baines will get to know me better, and they'll realise that I'm a person of action. I'm not a person that just talks. I will get things done for you, and I'll, and I'll make sure... One of the interesting things I've learned from coming to Baines is that... There's been lots of changes of administration, but what I hear on the streets is they're all the same and they never actually get anything done. Well, the difference with me is I will get things done.